Okay, so here we go. Let's look at this question. Again, it says your original f of x is 2x minus 8, but you want to graph the reciprocal of this. So you know the reciprocal is going to be 1 over 2x minus 8, which, of course, you know is going to have a non-permissible value, right? So bring the 8 over. you got 2x cannot equal to 8. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x cannot equal to 4. So I'm going to put that 4 right down right now. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be right here. And you know that that's a non-permissible value, which is, of course, what we referred to earlier as a critical point. This is still a critical point because that's going to determine the equation of our vertical asymptotes. Okay, our equation for the vertical asymptote is actually just x equals to 4. Look at the difference between these two things. This says x cannot equal to 4, which means that is your non-permissible value. But you want to draw an asymptote, and the asymptote goes through the non-permissible value and has an equation of x equals to 4. So our non-permissible value is right here at 4. Our asymptote actually does this and goes right through 4. So if they ask you what is the non-permissible value, say x cannot equal to 4. But what is the equation of the vertical asymptote? You just say x equals to 4, which is the non-permissible value. That tells you you can get close to that line, but because it's not equal to, you can't touch it. Okay, now look what I wrote here. Always start with the graph of your original equation. This is 2x minus 8. This is a y-intercept. There's your slope. So y-intercept is going to be, it's okay, minus 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. There's minus 8. There's your y-intercept. Your slope is a rise over 1, 2 over 1, up to 1, 2 over 1. And look, watch what happens. If you go up 2 again and over 1, up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1, it goes right through that Aha! It goes right through your critical point. So if you were to draw this, you and I know you'd have to draw it right through there looking like that. Okay? That's what the original graph looks like. But we know because we've done a reciprocal, you can't touch this. But here's an interesting point. Here's a couple other things that are interesting. Do you remember that table of values? Do you remember when your y's were the same for either this graph, the green one, or your reciprocal graph? That's when y equal to plus 1 or y equal to minus 1. So right here, this point here and this point here, this is at y equals to 1. This is at y equals to minus 1. These guys are going to be your invariant points all right so that's what your graph is going to go through the rest of this as long as you have that information down the rest of this is a sketch look you've got a graph going out this way which means that you're going to have a curve coming here very very close to the horizontal axis right here it's going to go through that y equals to minus one and that's where the bend is going to occur right at that point of y equals minus one look again here you go you've got a graph coming this way very close to the x-axis it's going to come and it's going to bend and it's going to intersect right at that point of y equals to positive one and you're going to go up like that and that's what the graph is going to look like if you graph got a graph here you're going to have a curve in this quadrant if you got a graph here you're going to have a curve in this quadrant. What if this was a graph that did that? Well, guess what? There is your asymptote. That means this is going to curve here, and this is going to curve there. That's all that means. So let's go on. One more thing I want to show you. If you actually wanted to determine what was the value of the x when it hits the invariant points, all you have to do is substitute plus and minus 1 into the equation, and you'll get it. So how do we figure this out? Real simple. They're invariant points. They're going to have exactly the same points. So you don't even have to substitute it into this equation. You could substitute it right back into the original equation. Check this out. Make this plus 1. There's 2x minus 8. But a bump can extend the page here. 
okay? I'm going to bring the 8 over. This is going to give you uh, 9 equals to 2x. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals to 9 over 2, which is 4.5. Check it out. 4.5 at, at positive 1 should be your first answer. So look, 1, 2, 3, 4.5. There it is. There's your invariant point at 4.5, positive 1. Let's find this one here and see what we can do. Okay, same idea. Let this not equal to positive 1 now. Let's let it equal to minus 1. 2x minus 8. Bring the 8 over. This becomes 7 equals to 2x. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x equals to 3.5. So this should be at 3.5. A negative one, because that's the negative one that you put in there. Let's check it out. Okay, here we go. Back to the original graph. Okay, so 1, 2, 3.5. And sure enough, there's your invariant point at 3.5, negative 1. So if you're asked to find the invariant points, that's really easy to do.